When you think of upper body strength, you think of bench press straight away, right? Well, in this video, we're gonna go through five mistakes people make when trying to do a bench press or get stronger at that movement. Whether you're a gym bro, whether you're a bodybuilder, whether you're a powerlifter, today's video is gonna help you decide if you're doing anything wrong and exactly what you can do to fix it. When I was a gym bro, I was trying to just catapult that weight and bounce off my chest like the forgotten trampolines in your back garden. What I didn't realize is I wasn't doing it properly. I was just trying to shift as much weight as physically possible. I had no idea how to arch. I had no idea how to leg drive. And I was just using brute strength to shift that weight from here to here, back to there. So I'm gonna go through the first mistake and I'm gonna get in depth here. So grab a brew, sit down and just heck your ears open. If I spoke to my younger self, I'd really nail these down and tell them to focus on these few things. Number one is develop yourself an arch, okay? Arching in bench press is essential if you're looking for strength gains, longevity of shoulder health as well. When we wanna arch that back, what we're looking for ideally is a stable base for them shoulder blades to retract and depress, so back and down. What you're using for that are these bad boys here, your lats. When we create that stable base, we wanna keep it throughout the entirety of the set. If you're sitting there now in a computer chair, if you're standing there, you can even practice this. You can put your arms straight. You can reach right out so it changes the shape of your shoulders. You can protract here. That's what we don't wanna do. That's where the mistake people have is they don't arch or they don't keep them shoulders backing down. You find this a lot in bodybuilding style training where they're just wanting to shift and pump that weight out as, as much as they can, as many reps as they can. Technique degrades a little bit. When that happens, you oftentimes see the shoulders coming forward. That's where we end up with impingements. That's where we end up in injuries. To stop that from happening, if you're sitting there now, try this. So bring your arm back using your shoulder blade using your lats, all right? Keep it there, so keep it anchored down, chest stacked nice and high, and just imagine moving your arm, extending it, but keeping that retracted at the same time. What you're gonna end up with there is that similar motion that we need when you're on the bench press. So imagine doing it with two arms, we're there. Okay, we're not doing this. I can do a whole nother video on bench press arching and the small, small things you can do to enhance that arch but I really wanna go in depth with that one. So I'm gonna leave that to a future video. The second mistake I see people make tons of times, and it's very, very common in gyms these days, is grip on the bar. When you set your grip, I want you to think about this diamond here for good reason. I'm gonna take you over to the bar now. Now this diamond I mentioned just then, when you're under the bench, I want you to set your hand in that diamond shape in the center of the bar. When you do, Move your hands out until the end of your palm reaches that first ring on the bar. When that happens, don't move. Clasp your hands together and tighten your grip. You might notice it's on a little bit of a diagonal slant. When you have that grip, I want you to turn your elbows in and then brace your back. That's giving you a stable base to work with. That's grip 101 straight away. You can have that grip. You can even move it a little bit narrower if you wanted to. The mistake I see people make a lot is thinking a wider bench press is better straight away. So a wider bench press may oftentimes put a lot more stress and strain on the anterior delt, the front of the shoulder and the pec. That's something we don't want to do, especially if you're someone struggling with shoulder impingements or don't have the most flexible of shoulders. We can do what's called a close grip press. What I would suggest in this scenario is just go two finger width closer than your normal bench press width. Also worth noting as well is your wrists. We wanna keep a stacked, stacked platform. All right, think of a an archway. That's nice and stacked. It's supporting a lot of weight. So are your wrists. If your wrists are bending, and if you're allowing that wrist to bend quite a lot, you're at risk from being unstable in the bar and having that wrist go through so much pain. My best advice for this, guys, is to keep that wrist joint, that elbow joint, the shoulder joint stacked as one whole unit. Should you do that, you'll have such a better time with stability, control, and the weight might even feel lighter as well. That's number two on my list is grip. Number three on my list, ladies and gents, is leg drive. Like the arch before, I could do a whole video on leg drive, but I'm just gonna tell you why it's important and 
the basics. Yes, it might seem strange, but we do use leg drive on bench press. That helps us create momentum from the floor up towards your shoulder blades, up towards the rep of the bench. Think of it like squeezing everything you can out of a tube of toothpaste. You can go ahead and squeeze just a little bit out, but when everything gets a bit more efficient, when it starts running out, you start rolling it, the toothpaste tube up to get every single ounce of toothpaste out of it. If you're anyone like me, I just can't be asked going to the shop and buying another one. It's the same with bench press. We're going to unravel and just go through every squeeze that we can to get the most kilos out of it. One big thing that changed the game for me with my leg drive is imagine you're on a leg extension in the gym. When you're doing that press, if you cue it just right and just the right time, you can use your leg drive to shift that bar up even faster. It creates more tension and where there's tension, there's more strength. Another way I teach clients how to do leg drive is like this. Imagine you're trying to slide yourself away from the bench. For this, you use your quads. So if you're getting a little bit of cramp, if you're getting a little bit of activation in your quads, that way you know you're doing it right. Don't be afraid to also play around with positioning of your feet when trying to get a better leg drive as well. I've tried so many things over the years. I've tried a narrow foot positioning. I've tried a wider foot positioning. Try out different things and see what works better for you. That's what lifting is all about. Like your lifting journey, like your weight loss journey, if you've been on one or if you're on already, or your gym journey, there's no one size fits all approach because no person is the same. We all react differently to different things. So our lifting must be the same as well. We must try out what works best for us. Big advocate for experiment with different things not when it's near your one rep max. So maybe try it out on an empty bar or just a little bit below warm up weight. So you can really experiment, try out that leg drive, try out the arch and try out that different grip. That brings us guys to number four. But before I show you, do us a solid, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of these videos. Click the bell. So another mistake I see people make all the time in terms of bench press is failing to control the bar on the unrack. When you fail to control a bench on the unrack, what I see lifters do straight away is unrack the bar and plummet it down to the chest. And that just creates a, an unstable platform, no control whatsoever, and oftentimes leads to like a spontaneous bar path. You never know where that bar is gonna go. What I would recommend for this, just to create a lot more stability, support, and confidence in that load, is unrack the bar, take one or two seconds after you've brought it out to your point at which you stop anchor your back in so anchor your lats in wait one to two seconds for that bar to be motionless and then you start your descent what you don't want to happen is unrack that bar and crash land down to your chest because it's not going to move back up especially when you're dealing with maximum load when you unrack your bar sensibly carefully and just wait that also demonstrates that you're in control of that weight. Let's fast forward to competition time. You want to be able to demonstrate that you're in control of that barbell. They're not going to give you a star command on the bench press if your bench looks like wobbly as hell and you, you can't have it. On the contrast, if you go far too quick, the rep's not going to be allowed. So by practicing now, again, like I said in the previous videos, setting them foundations, making sure you build a house not on sand, but with a strong, solid foundation, sort of like my gym floor, you're able to demonstrate that control early on, get that practice in and hone your technique. So my number four, like I said, is gonna be to control that bar when you unrack that weight. And mistake number five is an inconsistent touch point. What I mean by that is when you're coming down with the bar, avoiding the neck and clavicle area, okay? so. Imagine this is like a red zone and this is like a green zone here. When we're coming down with the bench press, we want to make sure that we're getting towards the hardest point in your chest bone around that point. Think of it like a zone here and here. If we come too far up, that's like no man's land. No, no one wants to go there. It's too dangerous. There's a potential risk of choking yourself to death. And it's going to put massive amounts of pressure and strain on your front shoulder, your anterior delt. When you're lifting, we want to make sure we have a zone with a bar touches each time and it's consistent. One big tip you can do for this is throw a little bit of chalk on the center nail and on your barbell. After your set, look at where that chalk is on your t-shirt or your jumper and make sure it's not like one white line here 
one here and one here make sure it's consistent and that's going to result in not just in a more efficient bar pack it's, it's safer guys it's not going to cause injury stress or risk of injury as well when we think of a bench press we want to imagine instead of a straight up vertical line we want to imagine what's called a j curve a j curve is the direction the bar travels in when you are executing that bench press rep so it's more like a diagonal path and diagonal line as opposed to a straight up and down approach not only only does this minimize the range of motion making the lift a more efficient and easier lift to do but also allows you to use a lot more tricep strength as well to lock out the barbell so if you want to get more efficient at your bar path you can even film your lifts from the side point of view make sure you have the full bar position in the center of the shot and just look at where your bar is traveling from and to there's apps such as wl analysis you can use that really helps you see on screen the direction of the bar path, just where it's going, the start and end point, and I can even tell you the speed in which the bar is traveling as well. Really handy for not just bench press, but for any lift you want to get better at. I'll put a link of that app in the description as well. So, like I said, guys, I'm going to be doing more in-depth videos on benching, leg drive, and everything else in between, how to improve at a later date. What I'm going to go through in them is far more in-depth than this video. Because again, they deserve their own shining star. So once you've mastered the arch in the back, once you've mastered the leg drive, once you've mastered the grip, the unrack, and the position of the bar on the way down, that's enough for you to take your bench press from a basic understanding and a basic level up towards a bit more of a sharper standard. And you can play with loads, you can play with volume, and you can even play with some variations as well. But again, I'm going to save that for another video. And if you've made to this point, guys, if you've got any questions at all about leg drive, arching, or grip, or any of the above we've went through, or maybe you've got another question about a mistake you're potentially doing in Brent Press, let me hear in the comments. Reach out below, and I will reply. Well, that's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay strong, and I'll see you in the next video.